Hi everyone, my name is Alara Gray, and this summer I research plant-insect interactions at pollinator habitats in Mead, Nebraska. Beneficial insects play important roles in agriculture as pollinators and as natural predators of pest insects. Unfortunately, beneficial insects are declining globally for a variety of reasons, including exposure to pesticides, which can kill or impair beneficial insects and disrupt ecosystem food webs. The goal of this project was to provide a baseline understanding of plant-insect interactions at pollinator habitats in Mead, Nebraska. This location is of particular interest because of its proximity to an ethanol plant, which processed pesticide-treated seed. So this project is part of an ongoing effort to monitor the effects of systemic pesticide contamination on the Mead ecosystem. High levels of neonicotinoids have been detected in plants several miles downstream from the ethanol plant suggesting that the local insect population may be at risk. Additionally, one way to help beneficial insects and recruit them to agricultural areas is to provide patches of diverse pollinator-friendly plants near fields of crops. Sampling for this project took place in pollinator habitat plots that were seeded in the spring of 2017. So we also investigated which seeded plants were still present and being visited by beneficial insects after four years since seeding and two years of minimal upkeep. We conducted our surveys once a week for five weeks at four pollinator habitat plots on the UNL NREC property, which is just south of the ethanol plant. We collected insects on blooms using aerial nets and vials for 15 minutes at each plot along a randomly chosen linear transect. These were identified to genus and other insects were identified to family. We also identified and quantified flowers within a one square meter quadrat at four random locations along the same transect. The top panel of this figure shows the total number of insects captured on each type of plant, the total number of insect families representing diversity, and the total number of blooms recorded for each type of plant. The bottom panel is similar but focuses only on bees. Out of 53 plant species that had originally been seeded at these locations, we observed 21 that were still present, although it is possible that additional species bloom outside of the time frame of this study. Out of those 21, 67% attracted at least one insect and 43% attracted bees. Many of the plants that did not attract bees or any insects had very few blooms, so they may not have been abundant enough to be attractive. This graph separates the total insects collected on each plant into categories of beneficial, neutral, or pests, where pests are harmful to crops, beneficial are either pollinators or predators of pests, and neutral is everything else. Three of these plants, bee balm, purple prairie clover, and yellow prairie coneflower, supported mostly beneficial insects, while the others supported a broader community of insects, including pests. This table shows the five plants which had the highest abundance and diversity of bees, and the five most abundant bee genera. The three plants from the last graph which mostly attracted beneficial insects are again on this list. About 86% of total bees captured and 100% of represented bee genera were found on these five plants, which suggests that lower diversity habitat plots might still be able to support a healthy and diverse community of bees. Additionally, all of these most abundant bee genera were solitary bees, and we only collected a total of three social bees, two bombus and one apis mellifera, in the course of sampling, which is surprising. To conclude, our results indicated that pollinator plots could potentially be seeded with fewer plant species and have similar effects in the long run. Many of the originally seeded species were outcompeted by volunteer species and grasses within four years, and the majority of the sampled bees were found on only a few plant species. Refining seed mixtures could reduce the cost of seed for similar plots in the future. Additionally, seeding plants that are mostly visited by beneficial insects could reduce the number of pest insects attracted to pollinator plots. Further research in this area could investigate the seeming absence of social bees at these plots and could also compare between bees with different nesting habits and lifestyles. Lastly, this data can be compared to past and future research to see how insect populations in need are changing over time, which will be important since the systemic pesticide contamination there may have long-term effects. I'd like to thank Judy Woosmart for being a great advisor, Edith Ikusi for helping with data collection, and Cheyenne Lindsay for helping with insect identification. That's all, and thanks for watching.